my name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, specifically the Darkest Rhapsody Estate thereof. We have our party already pre-selected, as you can see over on the side of the screen, but now Bashad, Pass, and Mortimer. Pass and Mortimer are both going to be like kind of low tier healers, effectively. It's, it's going to be a weird dungeon. We're doing a long ruins. Primarily, I'm doing this because I really want to be able to level both Pass and Bouchard out. Uh, so up to level four and then up to level five because I do want another highwayman for the DD missions I intend to go on as well as I definitely want a plague doctor. Now the plague doctor does have fear of mankind for the plus 15% stress versus humans as well as negative 10 accuracy versus humans as well as necromania. Necromania won't trigger in this area whereas fear of mankind might... That said, Blinding Gas and Plague Grenade are quite accurate at 105, plus the 10 accuracy on range skills from Plague Doctor's Blasphemous Vile. And I'm about to upgrade these, so I'll get another 5 accuracy. I should probably be pretty okay for the most part. Alright, so, but now... Nope, you're fine. Bashad, you're fine. Pass. And then Mortimer, you're fine too. Upgrade their kit as well. This is going to be a long mission, and we've got two semi healers. So we've got Mortimer here actually holding the Ancestor Scroll in order to increase her healing from four Divine Vapors to three to four uh, as her possibilities. I mean, the thing is, most of the time, Mortimer is going to be using Protect Me, and then the next turn be using Fortifying Vapors, and then Protect Me, and then Fortifying Vapors. So I think I'll be able to keep everyone at relatively high HP. I won't have the ability to, like, suddenly come back from, like, a lot of damage. So, well, I won't have the ability to suddenly come back from taking a lot of damage, save for resting. So we'll probably save our rest stuff our rest stuff, our campfires, until after we've taken a little bit of damage. Now, we've also got a lot of characters that are quite stressed out. Curious, Cetomania. Ooh, you're curious as well. That's unfortunate for you. Uh, we'll have you do that. You have Deviant Tastes. You're resilient, so plus 10% to your stress healing. That's actually kind of handy here. Uh, we'll throw you into the Gambling Hall. Evelyn. Guilty Conscience, Thanatophobia, Last Gasp of Natural. Cool. I can throw Evelyn pretty much wherever. Bajet, I can throw you wherever. Gordon, you will only drink. Okay, so I know where Gordon's going. And then probably toss Bajet there. And then Evelyn into here. I know we're spending a lot on our stress recovery right now, but we're pretty stressed out. So fair enough. And everything else looks pretty much comfy all right all right all right let's go out on our mission now our mission is going to be this long one in the wield and the wield in the ruins rather uh we still have the fulminating profit or rather the gibbering profit i think it is for their highest level just do a quick double check on that yeah the gibbering profit we've still got the gibbering profit for that area we've got Hagwitch brigand Swine King on Stable Flesh. Yeah, we've still got to get so many different ones done in the Warrens. It's just unfortunate they keep offering us garbage trinkets. I'm more than happy to do this because the Warrens would be a little bit more rough for us. But now it's actually holding the Necromancer Scholar that we got in the last episode. For plus 20% damage versus Unholy as well as plus 8% crit versus Unholy. Uh, and they've also got their plus 30% damage versus Human from Collect Bounty. So they're pretty much ready to fight anyone uh, fights should ideally start with Bashad moving themselves forward do I need pass to be in the third position or could I have Mortimer there it's probably actually better off doing that way all right let's go to the ruins now I'm probably going to take all of the food again as kind of like supplementary healing we've also got 50% extra food consumed on the hunter uh, the bounty hunter in particular because of the hunter's talent We've got 60% scouting, 25% from the trinket, and then 10% from two runes scrounger uh, quirks. Uh, we'll get four skeleton keys, two holy water, four shovels, and then, yeah, 24 torches. Cool, cool, cool. Let's 
Making absolutely certain that I haven't completely screwed something up here. I don't believe I have. Nighttime ambush prevention, as well as unparalleled finesse. Yep, okay, we're covered. I think. Maybe. <sighs> the fiends must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? Actually gonna make sure it's my antiquarian interacting with trinkets. Trinkets curios, rather. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Immediately drop the journal page. There's no way I'm gonna have the inventory space to keep that with me, so... Getting rid of it earlier rather than later is probably a good idea. Uh, I'll... I'll stun both of the backliners here. Mortem is definitely acting ahead of the Bone Bulwarks next turn. Are you acting ahead of the Bone Marksman? Most likely. All right, we're going to be using a Festering Vapors. Good. So our advance as well. Now, I could knock one of you out of position. In fact, that's probably the best thing I can do here. I was thinking about going for the kill on the Bone Marksman, but the Bone Marksman is actually going to move forward after I knock the Bone Bulwark back. If I knock the Bone Bulwark back, which I don't. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. Eh. Extraordinarily small in terms of damage. We're fine. Light them both up. Now, one of them is definitely dead before it ever gets an action. That was the dodge buff. Okay, the Protect Me was in the wrong quickens. position there. That's my bad. Death by inches. Eight damage. Woo! Hey, nice. Oh, come on. I actually have the focus ring as well. I should be hitting. All right. Uh, sure, I'll go for the advance thing to also get the kill. A faint hope blossoms. At this rate, the Bone Bulwark should be able to hit the third line, but they're pretty unlikely to be able to do any significant amount of damage. So I'm probably just going to be healing with the, the Antiquarian at this point. Oh, nice. Got him. Formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. So it's a 35% chance to hit that stun. Let me go for damage. The ground quakes. And then I'll heal you because I suspect you might be about to be attacked and Confidence might kill in return. As the enemy crumbles. Now, we won't take blood. We're probably not taking citrine either. So first obstacle. Cool. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Yeah, Bone Noble. And we didn't surprise him. That's bad. Okay, so we're usually, because I would rely on having like a Jester or a Stress Healer of some kind, uh, where usually I would probably go for the damage on the Bone Noble there. Instead, I am just going to go for the stun. Okay. Got him. Unfortunately, that does move the bone, uh, the cultist gladiator back into a position where they can get me. Uh, cultist gladiators, I'm also pretty certain they can only hit the front two lines. I think I'm probably best served by just stacking my dodge. A brilliant confluence of skill and purpose. Nice. Oh. That lowers their accuracy as well. That's interesting. Also, Gladiator moves back. And they're dead. I thought that actually might be enough. Friend for your gods. Doesn't get dodged. That's unfortunate. Uh, that's also another 10 damage. Nice crit on the heal as well. 
All right. Hopefully, we get the Plague Doctor first. Plague Doctor goes. Beautiful. They crit on the heal as well. We can't stop critting. And... I mean, now we're healthy enough. Go for the kills. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Getting a lot of gems that are stacking. I'm actually kind of appreciative. Hmm. I'm actually just going to run above 50 light. I'm not going to run above 75. I'm not going to be in Radiant the entire time. Uh, this is definitely a double stun the back line. Again, as much as I would like to deal damage, I would also like neither of them to ever have an action. Unfortunately, they could easily turn around and start hitting me, but at the same rate, how am I ever going to kill them? Yeah, I am actually going to need to start damaging them. Okay. And then... Please stun. It was a 60% chance, and it landed. Beautiful. So as long as the Plague Doctor goes first next round, we're in a really good position. And they're quite likely to, what with 12 speed. Okay, the Bone Arbalist will never get an action. The Bone Royalty is going to get an action, but there's very little I could have done to prevent that. And swing that about a pummeling. Now that's some damage. Whoa, you're not dead? I didn't even count that. I just took it for granted. Well, that was really bad on my part. And now we've lost a lot of HP on a target. Really ought not be losing that much HP. Um. I'm going to need to start healing that up. We can't let it get out of control because when it gets out of control, we're dead. Unbalanced. You actually managed to hit that stun, eh? Hey. Mad about it. So we've got five on the back line is a problem. Alright, that'll kill you. I'm trying to be as efficient with my action economy as I can. Ground pound totally gets dodged. Nice. Slowly, gently. This is how a life is done. Please. Beautiful. Bone command is also really slow, so we can take like a couple free healing actions here. Compassion is a rarity in the fevered pitch of battle. Uh, highest chance for crit is either of them. Both twenty-two. Stun him again. I'm gonna. I just have to toy with them for a while. I rolled that because it had a higher chance of crit, but it also had a lower chance of killing. Ideally, the final person to act is the bounty hunter. Never mind. I just have to roll that for the kill then. Perhaps the turning point. All right, I'm going to get rid of the Anti-Venom and the Citrine and take the Busts and the Rare Antique. We definitely need space for a Rare Antique. The Bust might end up getting thrown away as well, but eh, it's possible it doesn't. Completely empty, sure. Hmm. We're going to have to find space for a lot of healing actions here. Hey, look, we're actually going to be able to use a Holy Water effectively. Aquarian, thank you. Created water. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, we're going to get rid of the busts. And it's probably time to get rid of the onyx. Take the emerald and the rubies. Uh -huh. Move all of that over and we are covered. Keep myself above 50 torchlight. Let's go in. Mm. It's definitely, again, double stun the back line. This one's a lot easier for me to control, though. What with all of the enemies that have extraordinarily little in terms of HP. Annihilated. Woo! Boy. 
I couldn't have guaranteed that that was going to kill. Here's the rent for your gods. Eh. Nice try. That's not the target you should have gone for. Also, Diminished. you crit? You have the ability to crit? I didn't... I didn't know that. Someone should have told me that. Decimated. Yeah, we're just going to crit you right back then. Kind of essential I remain on top of my HP. Destroy. Don't attack Dismas. Thank you. All right, so again, it's going to be last one out. Shut the door. Eradicated. Yeah, that was not when I should have done that. Oops. Oh my god, another emerald and another ruby. Brought low and driven into the mud. That's perfect. Uh, we'll some skeleton key. I do want the bastards, but I really don't have space for them now. Probably going to use our first camp immediately after this room battle with Curio upcoming. So two spaces away. Stashed heirlooms of... A fortune waiting to be spent. No variety I care about. Woo! Secret door! Uh, if I had the space in my inventory, I would swap the stuff around so that Mortimer... So that, uh, rather, Paeus can heal 11 by having the Ancestor Scroll for the increased stress heal as well as the Ancestor's Map for the increased trap disarm chance. But I don't have the space in my inventory, so I'm not going to do that. Oh my gosh, we did get another the Consecrated Bowl. much worse than mere trickery and boogeymen. That's a jute tapestry. We're probably going to get another one, so I really want to hold on to the rest of the Holy Water as well. I also do need to rest with full camping, so I'm going to need 10 food per, so I can't start throwing away food. Um, I actually probably think I throw away torches. Because I'm about to pump the light before I go into this room anyway. In Radiance, may we find victory. Juke Tapestry is 4.5k. Yeah, it's worth its own space. Uh, I could use that in order to get rid of my last holy water, as well as do some disarm, some, uh, sorry, some stress recovery. Little bit of HP recovery there as well. I mean, I could totally see myself doing that. Let's get that mark. Time to perform beyond one's limits. Sure. One more down. Strike. This is how I intend to reduce stress over the party. Just by uncontrollably critting. 9 to 18. Rolls the 18. Not bad. Uh, that'll guarantee the backline dies. Now, if the frontline... Well, if it chooses its targets, poorly. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. So I could start another real big stack here. By throwing away the holy water. I could also rest earlier than I expected. I, what? Thing is, I'm going to have to come back to that secret door eventually. And that's usually at the end of the dungeon you want to do that. So that you have the smallest restriction on your inventory space. I mean, I don't know. hundred percent of room battles. I want to rest now. 
I was thinking I would go all the way down there, but then I'm, I'm backtracking very far. I could leave this until the end because I have to backtrack back to here anyway, right? No matter what I do, I'm backtracking a lot. I still want to keep the holy water. One more consecrated bowl and we are covered. Just covered in money. All right, I'm going to turn that down. That was difficult to do, but I think it was right. Come back to you. Eh, yeah, probably open that with the key. 60% to scout. I'm not seeing any consecrated bowls over here. Definitely time to take some healing actions with Mortimer, though. Whoa, all right, that was, uh, that was very low in terms of damage. Such a terrible assault cannot be left unanswered. Be gone, fiend. All right, there goes one of them. Mm-hmm. That's really unfortunate. Resists the disease, though. Is stunned. It's fine. Could have gotten an extra heal out here, but it's fine. Alright, both of those are already dead, so we can take healing actions now as well. Compassion is a rarity in the fevered pitch of battle. And our final healing action is roll the highest chance for crit. Executed with stress healing. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. That's... Yeah, probably should not fight that one in low light. Gonna be a lot of problems should we do that. Stun you to the back if we can. Nice. Swing! And protect me. Best I could get done there. Please target the person with the protection. Please. Right. Time to start the damage train on the back line. Uh, oh, oh, that's good. Mm, it's good if it kills you. Got pretty close though. And goblet. Ooh. Yeah, I could totally see Pays actually ending up stressing out before we end up out of here. It could be a problem as well. A powerful blow. <laughs> not bad, not bad. I I do have to take the healing action here, unfortunately. I don't really have a choice. Dodged. Now warding. It's unfortunate. Because now I do have to throw another thing at the Bone Bulwark if I want to kill them. I guess I could stun them instead. Has to be healing actions though. Again, we need to get on top of our HP. Fine. Stun him out of line. Start healing back up. Have to take way more healing actions than I would really like, but it's kind of worth it. It's kind of essential, actually, because I don't have a dedicated healer. Oof. Again. I'm kind of gambling on like a 35% stun here. Eh. Worked out in the end. Don't crit. 
Yeah, 11's a lot of damage to take. Oh, boy. We're definitely going to be resting soon. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. All right, so we'll pop out the light. Terrors may indeed stalk these shadows, but yonder, a glint of gold. We'll loot on our way back home. I'm probably actually at this rate ready to use the holy water for stress recovery on Paris in our backline. If only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. Which does mean I have to carry it until then. I would love to throw away the shovels, but I really can't. <laughs> it's just not possible for me to do right now. It'd be way too costly. I could actually use a shovel to open this. You get slightly more loot by using a skeleton key, but one skeleton key opportunity exists in that secret door, and there's probably another one up there, so... Whereas there's probably not four obstacles, so we'll smash it open. Got another holy water. And here I thought holy water was actually going to free up my inventory space. Go, divine benefits. Fair bit of stress recovery as well as a fair bit of heal. Go into this room. Then I loot that in low light. Oh my gosh, I actually can't. I can't do it. All uh, right, well, now we need to actually start getting rid of some serious things, unfortunately. So, one, two, three. Oh, take that space there, take that space there. I really don't have the ability to kind of like argue with these kinds of things right now. Um, you'll use the holy water. I was going to come back at the end of the dungeon for all of this, but I think it's pretty clear that I would not really have the food to backtrack that far. Okay, so that's from high to low value in terms of a uh, single stack. Well, it's not really, right? That would be there. Uh, I was gonna rest after this. Dang it. I'm actually kind of close to throwing a firewood in instead. Ugh. Or even the shovels at this rate. You know what? Single key. That's it. Fine. You got me, game. Yeah, you got me. We'll put all of our stackables down there, and then our survivables up there. Not how I wanted that one to go. Uh, all right, I'll fight this in low light. Oh, there's a bowl! There's a consecrated bowl there, by the way. It's exactly what I was holding my holy water for. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. You can dodge Hal, so I'm actually going to party buff there. Damn. Damn. Got dodged. Nice. Uh, my stun chance there is... 30%? A little bit too low. It's time to start lighting you up then. I still do have to do that, despite the fact that it's a ridiculous overkill, so that I can reset myself back, so that I have the ability to set up my repost again next turn. Here's the Howl. Didn't get the party dodge, unfortunately. Two people got the worries. What? What is that? Just what is that? Ugh. We're going to have so much stress on the party after this. It is going to be ridiculous. Mm 
Mhm. Two people. Two people got the worries. 16. You're already dead. You just don't know it yet. I can kill you before we have another round of combat. Or I can take the opportunity to do some healing. I think I'll take the opportunity to do some healing. Somebody be resting in the next unoccupied room, I guess. Probably rolling mostly stress recovery and disease cure. I'd love to be able to interact with that, but it'll give me a disease, creeping cough. That's a mine, and... That's fine. All right. Alright, so in terms of stress recovery. Self-medicate to remove a disease, and then I can remove a disease from Bashad with leeches. So there goes the worries twice. Uh, I would love to remove a bunch of stress off of Paeus, but I still think the best action here is Bandit Sense, Unparalleled Finesse. Give myself the ability to just completely end fights before they start. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted and purpose is made clear. All right, it's empty. You know what? I'm actually going to have you read. Yeah, dull and uninteresting. There's a madman. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I will do the force guard. Probably going to be necessary. There's this double stun on the back line. Nice. Very, very good. I really would have liked if I could have set up my repost first. Just seems like it would be handy. Good. All right. Frothing Nightman's down. Most important thing on that field to remove. To a killing blow. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, a bunch of damage. Alright. Gotta remove that bleed, unfortunately. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, I can't really get the Cultist Enchantress out of position, unfortunately. I'll cast Protect Me here. Sure. Ah, I was really hoping for a crit. Oh, well. And by preventing her action, we're preventing more stress coming out against the party, so that's totally fine. Roll the heal on the Bounty Hunter, and it should not be but a thing to kill the cultist player in the front line there. And you know what? Even polish him off. Good crit. These holy water. Creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. That's holy water. All right, I'm going to backtrack. Hey, we managed to get all the way on that backtrack without getting a single loss due to or single stress due to backtracking decorative urn two more emeralds i actually i'm full on emeralds so i actually have to start a different stack oh, wow a full stack of emeralds so five by uh, 750 so four by 750 is three thousand so it's three thousand seven hundred and fifty that's more than a puzzling trapezohedron. Of course, it requires you to have the full stack, but yeah. Yeah, we have no keys here, so we're gonna have to hazard opening these. Whoa! That's real good. Um, as a result of that, I'm actually gonna be going for damage there rather than the alternative. Let's 
done. Damn. And I'll start buffing our dodge. It's not too likely the Antiquarian is directly specifically hit. And you would need them to be directly and specifically hit for the guard to be a thing. I mean, like, this could roll punishment, but it could also just roll point blank shot and miss. Yep, that's going to be a blood letter down pretty quickly here. Go for another heal. Top off the party and crunch him. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. My lord. We get a skeleton key. Hang on. Does everyone still have their battle buffs? Yeah, for two more rounds. We get a skeleton key right before we have the ability to interact with something using it. So there's one obstacle up there. If there's no obstacle in this hallway, then I can probably throw away my shovels now. That said, I know that I have to go up that hallway, right? Because I haven't already got the quest victory. If I had the quest victory, then I would know that that final room is not a room battle, but I now know it is. Um, I definitely want to take the key. What over? Probably over five torches right now. The way is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Mm -hmm. So we'll move up, loot this. And now we know that we don't need the shovels. Beautiful. Well, I mean, they still can open curios for me, but... How many battles do we have upcoming? Because I could turn out the torch and just do two battles in low light and loot a bunch of stuff in low light. Then pump the torches before I go into that battle. Go into this final battle with the remainder of the torches and then backtrack to hit those curios. So I actually think I turned the torch out here. Secrets and wonders can be found in the most tenebrous corners of this place. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely just swap those two there. All right. So not only did we manage to hold our own, but it looks like we're going to get out of this dungeon with a ridiculous amount of loot. Oh, hell yeah. Plus 30% damage. Eh, as long as I'm not surprised, and I'm not surprised. Beautiful. These folk are pretty fast, so that is a little worrying. The fact that also they have higher chance to crit because it's dark, and also combine that with the fact that we have less stress resist because it's dark, that's going to be a little bit of a problem, but it's okay. It'll be okay. Uh -huh. We've just got the one gargoyle left. We can get one more action before they go. Damn. Don't crit. Nice. Uh, okay, now we can just take healing actions, basically. I did that as a healing action just in case it crit, effectively. Because then we've been stress healing. And... Same for that. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Mm -hmm. One more fight in low light, and then we can also camp. Actually, oh, beautiful. That can use a shovel. Um, but actually, we can camp in this room to turn the light back on. So I could also get rid of my torches without much, uh, much of a problem. Uh, 
right. I'll add up some defense on you. Figures. Well, now the marksman doesn't have the ability to do anything except the the bone bone jab. What's it called? Uh, bayonet jab. There we go. Bone jab. Bone. Bone. Slice him. Masterfully executed. And it's probably about time to buff everyone's dodge here. Well, cool. And now we've actually got the ability to hit the bone veteran. Uh, no matter what I hit with the stun, it'll kill. All right, so just go for crit then. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. This gets looted with a shovel, breaking it open. Glittering gold, trinkets and baubles, paid for in blood. I'm still going to hold the shovel because it's possible any of these future ones is another cabinet. Oh my gosh. All right. We'll get that damage buff immediately after we rest here. Gathered close in tenuous firelight and uneasy companionship. So basically all I want here is stress reduction. So I'm thinking bandit sense for nighttime ambush prevention. We'll swap the ancestor's scroll over to you so that you can self-medicate in order to remove 10 stress from yourself. That's only 10 stress though. Fine. And then we'll move it over to Dismas, Bashad rather, who's going to use it for 19 stress recovery on you. And then to Benair, who will use it for another 19. Finally, we'll have Mortimer increase their own stress resist by 50%. And nice. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. Pop my head back out in this direction to get the soothing pale light of a plus 20% damage buff until next camp, which is never. I mean, this feels like pretty good management considering, you know, not having a stress healer, not having a dedicated you know, healer, healer. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, that'll do. Another jute tapestry. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? My gosh. We are going to leave this with so, so much money. Uh. Well struck. Not bad. I'm just going to kill him. Helps me really manage my action economy. Hopefully she acts fast enough to force the guard me before the cultist does anything particularly annoying to her. Eh. Doesn't move, doesn't get stunned, not bad. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she didn't move in time, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, this gladiator is going to struggle to hit. 
I didn't want that to crit. Damn it. That moved the Cultist Gladiator back into a position where they have a reasonable shot. That's exactly what I didn't want. Damn you. No reason to get another action out of her, so I'm just stun her. Cool. Also gonna pump Darkness the light out. In, haunting the hearts of men. And try my absolute ever ready best to crit her. Didn't work. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. We now know there's no need for shovels and there's no need for food. I could take a single citrine or a stack of crests. I'll take the stack of crests. I'll turn to mine. Yeah, I expect to replace it. Yeah, with two portraits. It's fine. I expect to replace it still. Yeah, with money. And then with... Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Nice. Just. Just nice. Room by room, Holy hell. Hall by hall. We reclaim what is ours. 57.5k. That's a pretty good haul. You get the fits. Negative five accuracy. I wouldn't actually, if it was plus three speed for negative five accuracy, I'd leave it, but negative 5% crit is pretty much not great. Uh, Bashad needs to remove slow draw, unfortunately. Scientific on pass. I mean, we don't actually run you with Vestals at the moment. We run you instead of a Vestal at the moment, which is kind of terrifying. Some a sanguine memory to me. All right, we had a lot of stress reduction going on while we were away. Let's have a look at... Oh, yeah, that's all manageable. Especially, like, Penel having 30 stress going into a battle is fine. I mean, they de-stress themselves. Ah, oh, actually, they're level 6, so it's probably not that fun. That said... Wow, that's just a lot of money to pick up there. Nothing in here I desperately want. Anyone in here that I desperately want? Fairfax, no, no. You have fragile as well as curious. Eldritch hater on a Vestal's not bad. It's not good. It's not like I'd lock it in. That went really well. Mortimer also leveled out to five. Mortimer is no longer in the mid tier anymore. Bashad and Ben now leveled up pretty heavily. Um, Pass. Didn't manage to level up past level three, but you know, they're still kind of working in terms of their power leveling right now. Ancestor's pistol for plus 15 accuracy on range skills as well as plus three speed. That's really good. Long champion dungeons are really difficult though. I find them to be personally more difficult than the darkest dungeon missions. I don't see any of these that immediately leap out as the thing that I'm going to be doing in the next episode. So I'll figure it out between now and then. Until next time, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Darkest Dungeon. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.